Absolutely, absolutely I'm concerned about free speech. Well, okay, so, you know, there was a policy at issue in this case that uh, essentially required, you know, um, employees at a university, public employees at a public institution to report their activities outside of their job, which just said plainly like that maybe doesn't sound so um, objectionable. Uh, but when in application that policy is used to say, well, before you go speak about anything, you should tell us what you're going to speak about and give us the opportunity to approve that activity. Well, then that sounds much more objectionable to me and I would hope to a lot of people. Uh, and that's exactly what happened in this case, is they took this seemingly benign policy and then uh, as applied to James Tracy and even other professors. So let's just kind of get this straight here is that they not only said, James, you with this terrible viewpoint should have told us about your plans to express it and, and, and didn't do that. And so you're in trouble, tisk tisk. But uh, they also were saying that to other people, other professors and other professors were not happy about it and were complaining about it and wanted things to change. And that is evidence that we were not permitted to introduce at trial. So that is part of the reason why we feel we were strongly handicapped. Um, because the jury totally missed the idea. They thought, you know, oh, it's only James who was having this problem. And only James who thinks this policy was unfairly applied was just tr totally untrue. And so back to the First Amendment issue is that, you know, so now, you, okay, public institution, and they want a public employee to tell you what your speech is going to be before you go speak it and give us an opportunity to say whether or not we, you know, think you should go do that. That's terrible, in my uh, opinion. And then that policy and, and the constitutionality of it was never adjudicated in this case, okay? So that's something that we're taking up on appeal. And the reason why it wasn't adjudicated is also troubling because it's, the policy is part of a collective bargaining agreement. And, you know, public employees <coughs> in many institutions, they have collective bargaining agreements. It's just the way business is done. So now, if you just extrapolate that precedent, oh, so now if we put an unconstitutional policy in a collective bargaining agreement and then we limit parties to that bargaining agreement's ability to adjudicate the constitutionality of those policies in arbitration settings, well then nobody ever gets to, a, to, to challenge the constitutionality of these policies of public institutions in a setting where these types of issues are adjudicated, which is in federal court where, where constitutional issues are heard and, uh, and where people have the capacity and the competence to, to decide them and there's a system in place to ensure that they are decided uh, in accordance with the law, constitution, precedent, you know, all that. So that, what happened in this case uh, essentially, um, you know, puts a rubber, puts a seal of approval on that kind of activity and, and possibly prevents future um, harmed individuals uh, from you know, um, having their constitutional rights vindicated. Yeah. Uh, so that is, yeah, th those are the very real First Amendment implications in this case. And then also just the fact, just the sheer fact that there was a, f a factual, obvious, you know, effort to target this person and um, remove him for his unpopular views. That is something that the First Amendment is you know, in, in the first instance made, is there to protect somebody from being targeted for their unpopular views. And this, and, and, and in, the, in these facts, in this case, uh, that's what happened. And, you know, obviously the jury felt differently. Um, I feel like they were confused, but they felt differently. And so now, with this set of facts so egregious, you can't find a constitutional violation what does that mean for people going forward when, when their facts aren't as egregious as this?